Welcome to this episode of the Continue Change podcast. Today we are talking about the power of video and storytelling for nonprofits. And we are lucky to be speaking with someone who's a real expert in that space. Eric, why are you here? What do you know about this world of video? <laughs> well, I am Eric Dimmick from Ozone Films based in Grand Rapids and spent the last four, four or so years doing video branding content for lifestyle and hospitality brands and kind of essentially perfecting that, that art of engaging emotions and bringing storytelling into uh, branding content for hospitality brands and lifestyle, like I said, but also uh, I'm excited to talk to you about the, the nonprofit end of things because it's a, it's a perfect segue into how those connect and how those intermingle between each other. So I'm excited to kind of yeah. offer some input and some, you know, extra info into to what this conversation could go towards. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you started there. You know, I feel like as much as I love the nonprofit world, for me anyways, it's almost easier to envision video and photography and the visual art form in regards to hospitality. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm at the beach in Florida with my family and it's easy for me to see how to, to do that visually. What sure. do you feel like I can learn if I work at a nonprofit about how to tell my story just from that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about being authentic to the emotions you're trying to convey. So when you say you want to, you know, a uh, place in Florida and the hospitality aspect, what are you feeling when you're there? You're feeling the sense of relaxation. You're feeling the sense of warmth. This, you're seeing beautiful things. Take that to the nonprofit side. What, what emotions are you feeling when you mm. bring in to this, this emotional nonprofit? I want to give money. I want to donate my time, donate my money to uh, this, this cause, this mission that I believe in. So as a nonprofit, looking at video and looking at the branding side of video from a perspective of we need to tell our story, but we need to tell it in an emotional way that mm. people are going to feel the right things that we want them to feel. Like I said, it's the same way when you approach branding on a commercial level for hospitality brands. It's how do you want people to feel when you stay? Um, and one little trick that I've always, you know, kind of put in my back of my mind whenever we do hospitality brands is you can make the place look as cool as you can, but if the beds don't look nice, no one's going to stay. And mm -hmm. the idea behind that is, okay, this visuals are great, but what's really the whole experience? It's, I want to feel relaxed. And what's, what do people associate with that relaxed, that relaxed feeling? It's the space where they sleep, the space where they call home, at least temporarily. And so that mm -hmm. whole idea of bringing in those emotions that you really need is directly relatable to nonprofits just in a little bit uh, of a skewed, a skewed way that I think is hmm. a little bit abstract, but it, essential to master. Hmm. So if I am trying to capture an emotion, um, that means that I have to be a little bit vulnerable. Mm -hmm. what, what does it look like for you personally when you're working with a a nonprofit or another organization and you're trying to expose yourself to to their cause and to their mission and has that been more difficult in the last 60 to 90 days as as some of the nonprofits you're working with have probably been struggling a bit yeah it definitely i i think it really all comes down to being human and that's something i say a lot of time to everybody i work with my teammates and clients alike is it just comes down to being human and understanding why people work, mm -hmm. um, especially in the last 90 days. Why are, why are nonprofits struggling and why would people be willing to give and donate their time? Um, it's because of that emotional human connection that we all share of sympathy and compassion. Um, and so it definitely has been hard to kind of jump into the shoes and try to convey that sense of emotion when everybody else is already struggling just as much. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just... It, it's just a hard time in general. Like it's not going to mm -hmm. be, there's really no way to just say, Oh, well, we're going to master this time. Like we got mm -hmm. this. It's just kind of trying to figure out the best way to handle it with the human perspective in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it require, do you think empathy to shoot a meaningful video? Absolutely. 
Yeah, I think that's I think that's one of the most essential aspects of of create of, te- of storytelling in general, but also bringing in that emotion. Um, I mean, empathy is like the exa- you know there's another word for emotion in a way, and so being able to relate to that emotion is essential to be able to craft a story that appeals to that emotion. So if you're if you're not able to be empathic towards the cause or the mission, then there's going to be a disconnect in the way that that mission is conveyed. Uh, and that's why it's so essential to find the right person for you and the right team to work with you as a nonprofit. Um, somebody that understands your mission, somebody that believes in your mission, and somebody that's empathic towards uh, what you believe uh, mm-hmm. as an individual, you know, hiring mm-hmm. that company or, or connecting with somebody, but also as a brand uh, image itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the video you mentioned kind of transforming as this industry is transformed further and accelerated by all that's going on in our world and nonprofits are seeing that they need video perhaps um, more vividly than they have in years past even where in the world do i start if i'm trying to transform the way that my board and my budgets feel about video work because video work can be expensive yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, it varies dramatically, and it depends on. Um, I mean, it, as you would know for sure, and you could definitely talk on more the the ad spend and the budget on that regard. Um, yeah, that's that's a whole separate side of things that you know from the video production aspect. We keep in mind in in a sense of knowing where it's going to be delivered, um, mm-hmm. and making sure that it fits that way. But that's a whole separate side of the budget that I know that gets confusing too. And then mm-hmm. adding the the video production cost on top of it, it, it definitely starts to to weigh weigh you down a little bit um, but I think there's ways especially as a nonprofit, um, mm-hmm. when authenticity is the most important to essentially find that medium of we need to tell our story but we don't need this massive project at this point mm-hmm. in, in time so mm-hmm. you know starting again just going back to those most human characteristics of your brand of your nonprofit's image and saying how do we share this story specifically so maybe that means one little story about uh, somebody that was impacted by mm-hmm. you and, and sharing mm-hmm. that and making a campaign around that, which mm-hmm. from a video production aspect can be done very efficiently. You know, you mm-hmm. can capture this one story, make a bunch of different pieces of content from that. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you can take another story of somebody who's within the nonprofit and has done a lot of work for them and um, in the community and sharing that message might give gives people a sense of connection to the nonprofit and understanding the people behind it. And again, mm-hmm. really quick, really efficient to, to develop that content, to develop the storyline. Mm-hmm. And then from there, you can, you can build it out however you want. And so if you want to create more of a, you know, overall commercial, you mm-hmm. can take all of those aspects, put them together and in, into a full story of here's how we were founded. Here's how, you know, here's what we're doing now. Um, and that's, and that's more of that storyline video. But then if you want to go to more of a commercial video, breaking it down into 20 to 30 seconds, I mean, there's so many options that you can, mm-hmm. you can do. And so I think a lot of people do get quite, you know, put back, especially when budget isn't, uh, you know, flexible too much. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think there's no need to be uh, like frightful, uh, especially if you're working with the right people. Um, and so whenever we're working with a nonprofit, I always approach it from the standpoint of what can we do for you? So it's not, what can you do for us? That's going to allow us to do something for you. It's what can we do for you at the, at the, at the most, you know what I mean? So if they, yeah. they can't, re- if we can't meet their original vision and scope and budget, we're going to, we're going to figure out how we can make the most impact for them that fits with them. Uh, and I think that's, the ascent for me that the reason I lead my team that way is because it is a nonprofit and it should be a mission you stand behind and it shouldn't be something that you know you're being callous towards and so I think finding that right uh, team and finding the right people within your company or contractors to do video work is is, is essential mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and shouldn't be feared right right we should we shouldn't be afraid of these things and in order to tell a story we need to confront some of these logistics what are yeah. some, you know, what are some best practices? I think a lot of the nonprofits we're working with, you know, are talking to, uh, I know that they've worked with agencies, they've had good experience, they've worked with agencies, they've had bad experiences, they've had, you know, their, their, their board's nephew or niece or someone else shoot video on, on an iPhone. 
what are yeah. some best practices to make sure that what we do in this space actually produces results? Yeah, I and and I would I would give partial credit to you knowing a lot on this one as well as far as how the marketing end would be received um, in distribution. But inevitably, from the storytelling perspective, you really want to focus on what is the goal of the piece of content that you're creating? Is it just a PSA? Is it just to showcase an event? Because then maybe it makes more sense to just have that nephew that does video record that and just throw it up on social media. Mm. Um, but if you're looking for a more constructed and um, mm -hmm. organized campaign, you're just not going to get the effectiveness, the, the, um, the strength that you're going to, that a dedicated team is going to provide either on the marketing end or on the video production end. And so I would say when it comes to best practices of getting into it, I would figure out what your real need is as far as communication. So if you're, if you need to send a message that's quite simple and not in depth and just a one-off type of, of piece of content, it's, it's totally more doable to go with, you know, that nephew or a smaller mm. type um, hmm. situation, but I would, I'm always on the side of recommending and, um, I wouldn't even say I'm biased on this. I think it's, it's very, um, uniform. I, I think if you're on that side of, of really conveying a strong message and a campaign, you're always going to want to find a team that's dedicated and experienced yeah. because yeah. You know, they're just going to have so many more resources, experience and knowledge of the industry that you're trying to convey. In. Yeah. Qual well, it's always, I think when it comes to content quality over quantity, Sure. And quantity is a mistake that some of us make. Um, on the on the distribution side, you know, it's so interesting that you mentioned that because I think that one of the things we see happen a lot in the nonprofit space, I don't know if this is true for you, but we see video projects get launched, maybe even, for example, for a capital campaign. Yeah. And no ad dollars get put behind that. No one thinks about you know, how to actually distribute the video, they just spend their energy making it and kind of set it free like a bird. Right. We're absolutely of the mindset that you should be spending probably at least 30 or 40% on top of your video budget for distribution of that video right. um, to make it worth your while. So I'm I glad would agree you, with that margin. I'm glad that you brought that up. Yeah. I mean, really, it should be a thousand percent, right? We should spend a thousand percent. Yeah, I mean, as long as yeah. it's well constructed, you're going to get yeah. that return. Yeah, uh, but, but yeah, I, I know a thousand percent might be a little bit of a leap in this. Yeah, way. yeah. <laughs> what are what are some? So you know, we've kind of talked about videos ROI, as it were. Uh, if I'm a nonprofit investing in it from a financial standpoint. What are some of the items that might feel more intangible? Um, you know, are there like little snippets that I get out of it? Are there photos that I get out of it? Are there other pieces of content that come out of a video shoot? Yeah, I mean, it's it really is customizable to any any level, I, and that's one of the benefits of being video. Um, if you do just photo to transfer and get extra video, is going to be much harder. Um, but taking video, uh, you can everything's already set up for photos to be taken as well. Um, and, and video can be edited in, you know, a multitude of different ways. Like I was saying, you know, you can do really short cuts of a, of a bigger story or really short cuts of a smaller story and many different stories. And, mm. and there's unlimited possibilities for how you can create. And that's again, why it comes back to what is the message that you need to convey? What is your mm. need? If mm. it's, putting content on a website, I mean, you're going to want that brand video to tell your story. You're going to want that video to really engage that emotion, mm -hmm. but you're also going to want that photo, especially if you're getting started, you're mm -hmm. going to want that photo content to create that, that overall brand image mm -hmm. and the, the look and the feel of your, of your nonprofit. And so having, again, having that, what you need in mind is going to help you definitely figure out and communicate to the video production company that you choose or the marketing agency you choose as well what what you're going to need to get the most return yeah 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 i always love of course you know the all the little snippets of content as a marketer because then you right. get them um across the board you can do behind the scenes outtakes all that right. fun stuff um i wonder if there is something that has particularly inspired you as far as video content is concerned in the nonprofit space over the last few months. Um, 
maybe they did something just innovative or, or unique or powerful? Sure. I mean, I, I would almost say it towards how larger companies have angled their message. Uh, nonprofit or not nonprofits have mm -hmm. angled their message towards how a nonprofit, I think, should uh, potentially communicate their message. Um, and a great example is um, a cellular company over in Asia. They produced an ad that was all about this emotional, heartfelt Mother's Day message. Um, and they did it in light of the COVID situation. And it wasn't selling. It wasn't, you know, any, it, it was literally just providing their hearts to people. It was just showing yeah. the heart behind that company. And yeah. I think that has a direct correlation to nonprofits and how their messages should be conveyed. Um, I think nonprofits in this time have had a hard time in general putting out any messages. So mm -hmm. me personally, I haven't seen any um, major changes from the nonprofit space as far as yeah. the branding goes. But I think that's a great example of how a nonprofit, and I, I've said it a couple of times, I know, but just sharing that heart, just sharing that emotion behind mm -hmm. what you guys are doing. And so from for there, that they're, they're a cellular company. So they use, you know, FaceTime, they use phone call and, and sharing the message with that. And so from a nonprofit perspective, what do you offer and how does that not not how does that benefit somebody tangibly, but how does that benefit somebody emotionally? Mm -hmm. how is mm -hmm. how is that person going to feel on the other side of it if you're a food pantry and you're giving away food okay they're not going to be hungry and that's amazing but how's that going to make them feel it's going to make them feel secure it's going to make them feel warm it might put a smile on their face it mm -hmm. might it might brighten everyone's day around and so you have to lean on the other side because people can get food in a lot of different places and if you're a nonprofit, especially on the donation side how are you going to get people to feel like they need to donate to you. If, if, they're, if you're just giving away food, they don't feel like their money's going towards anything more than just a product that they could purchase as it is. Mm -hmm. You need to be giving away that emotion and mm -hmm. uh, appealing to that on that end of things. Mm -hmm. And that, that really just so resonates to bring it full circle back to what I'm buying when I make that hotel reservation in right. the, the you know, in the hospitality sector, what we, like we kind of started with, I think a lot of people look at this and go, what's the connection between hospitality and nonprofits? Yeah. Uh, but I'm imagining that feeling I have as I sit on my couch with my wife and I imagine myself watching the sunset. I imagine myself sitting under the waterfall in the pool. What I'm hearing you say is that that emotion is what we're trying to capture with video. And nonprofits know how important emotion is and they should remember that video is one of the best tools for capturing that emotion. Right. I was just going to hit on that too. I mean, there is no better medium than video to capture that emotion. Um, photos are great, but when you look at, when you watch somebody's uh, video of somebody's face, and I, I do this a lot when I'm directing uh, talent, you know, telling them, the, the minor things you're doing with your facial structure and your cheeks and your mouth, that all communicates things, millions of different signals as you're watching it. Um, so much more than a photo does. And, and photos are beautiful and they're great for, you know, the, that one off type, one off type content, but mm -hmm. there is no better medium than video to convey the entire essence of a human and the emotion behind them. And, and especially that really is down to having the right talent, obviously. Uh, but even if you don't have the right talent, sometimes the raw moments convey even more. And mm. so using video, there is no better way to tell the story. And so if you can craft your story, you're going to get, you undoubtedly are going to get the highest return um, by, by using video and investing in a video for your brand. Yeah. Yeah. And even if it's smaller videos, it doesn't have to be this you know, it doesn't have to be a 30 person thing. Yeah. I mean, no. for the same reason that you and I are doing this with zoom, right? There's yeah. just, I think that's one of the things we've learned here in the last uh, couple of months. There's something just super powerful about being able to see facial expressions. Right. Being able to, to picture a, a face uh, and have audio along with it. So, right. Wow. Wow. So as things continue to change, so do we. And it's been really interesting today, I think, just to think through how nonprofits can learn about the power of video, even from other industries, 
right. like those that sell us our vacations and our, our hotels. Um, it has been such a pleasure speaking with you today, Eric, and I love what Ozone Films is doing. I know you guys have been a force for good in your storytelling here in the West Michigan area, but also throughout the world. What would you like to leave us with today? I would just like to uh, essentially say the, the one word that I always call what I do on the type of work rather than hospitality, lifestyle, whatever, is just humanality. And there's no better, mm. and, and pairing that with no better way to com convey that than video. And so I think yeah. you, if you have those perspectives in line, there's, there's no question in my mind the, the value of making this mindset shift towards um, using video and even not even using video, just putting it in your mind and thinking the impact that you can potentially have if you have those two mentalities uh, in mind. Yeah. Yeah. I love that word. Humentality. I don't know if it's an actual word. I don't think it is, but that's how I've always classified what, what myself and my team do, um, whether it's yeah. hospitality, lifestyle, nonprofit, uh, or even just a smaller company um, here in Grand Rapids. It's nothing matters if you're not focused on the human aspect of it. So. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and the pleasure has cool. been all mine too. It's a, I'm, I'm hope this um, helps a few people out there kind of get their feet under them about knowing that their investment to video will, will go towards the right place for their company. So. Bam. And Eric, we'll put it in the show notes, but where can we find you? Anywhere on, on social media, Ozone Films, um, or myself, Eric Dimmick, you can find me on all social media as well. Cool. Thanks, man. See ya. Thank you. We'll see you later.